So this right here is a 2018 MacBook Air. Apple surprised me when they refreshed the MacBook Air. I kind of thought they were going to kill off this line of computer because with the just plain MacBook being as thin and light as it is, I just didn't really think there was a place for the Air anymore. But um, sure enough, they revived it this year. And uh, the first thing I thought of when they did that is, who is this computer really for? Because if you want something super portable and thin and light, you know, you would just get the, the plain MacBook. If you want a little more power, you'd get a MacBook Pro. And I was just so curious about, you know, what is this computer actually like and who is this for that I ended up buying one for myself. So my laptop that I was using as my main laptop was a 2011 15-inch MacBook Pro, which still worked. It was running pretty well with an SSD in it, but it was just getting to be kind of a dinosaur. It was just so large and heavy to lug around all the time. I just wanted something a little more, you know, a little more, you know, don't have to break your back to carry it. Now, even the modern 15-inch MacBook Pros are a lot thinner and lighter than what I had, um, but they are astronomically expensive. And, um, well, I thought that I would maybe go 13-inch, and then I thought, well, instead of Pro, why don't I just try the Air? It has me so curious, I just want to see what it's like. So I ended up getting a MacBook Air. So, yeah, it, it's absolutely gorgeous. There's no way you couldn't love this form factor. Ultra thin, classic MacBook Air form factor, tapered, tapered edge of the front here, wedge shape. I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. You get two full-fledged Thunderbolt 3 ports on the side. A lot better than the single USB Type-C port you get on the just plain MacBook. And the first ever Apple laptop that has Touch ID without having a touch bar. So I can use Touch ID and there it is. I can unlock, get into my computer. Now, I'm not going to get into a deep review here. I'm not going to talk about Mac OS and, you know, how this computer performs and all that. Because there's a million and one other reviews out there about that kind of stuff. But I just want to say that, yeah, this computer is... It's in terms of you know going from my 2011 15-inch MacBook Pro to this, oh my god, it is just it's so nice. It's so thin and light and portable, and it's nice to have a laptop I can actually you know use in my lap without straining my legs. Yeah, I, I really do like it. Now, performance, yes, it's got a Y-series Intel i5 dual-core processor. Yeah, we're getting to 2019 here. I kind of would like to see a quad-core processor or at least a full-power i5. But honestly, in real-world real world usage, it, it does quite well. I've never had a situation for, you know, the basic tasks that I do where it really felt slow. It never feels slow. It never lags. The SSD in here is super fast. All of Apple's SSDs and their laptops now are crazy fast. We're talking like around 2 gigabits per second read and write. Like, it's crazy fast. So, yeah, this feels extremely snappy. Much, much, much improved display from the old MacBook Air and, and of course, from my old 2011 MacBook Pro as well. And I found that even though this is a 13-inch screen and my old Mac was a 15-inch screen, the resolution is so much higher, I can fit about the same amount of stuff on the screen as I could before just because the resolution is so much higher. Now, a lot of people complain the brightness doesn't get bright enough on this new MacBook Air. They complain that um, the colors aren't as accurate. But, hey, especially if you're coming from an older Mac, it's going to look beautiful. And, you know, 99% of people are, are not going to be bothered by that. It looks really good. Uh, so, yeah. I got the model with 512 gigs of storage and 16 gigs of RAM. So, yeah, that definitely made the price go a little bit up there. And... You know, the price of the MacBook Air is kind of overpriced. It's it's up from what it used to be at the starting price. But, um, yeah, it's an Apple product. That's to be expected. Now, I really, really like this computer. But in a vacuum, it, it's a no-brainer to get this. If you want a small, light, portable, but still snappy-feeling computer... From Apple, it's, it's a no-brainer. And honestly, you could do more than just the basics on this. I mean, you could play older games. Obviously, it has Intel integrated graphics. Um, you're not going to be able to handle anything much at all. You can use an eGPU with this. It, it's compatible with an eGPU, but um, I'm not sure how well that would do on here. But um, 
You can play older games like Portal. I downloaded Steam on here. I played some Portal. I played some Call of Duty 2. Obviously, those are really old games, so they should run fine. They do. But, um, uh, oh, I got to say, Fortnite. You know, can it run Fortnite? Um, eh, not really. I mean, it can run it, but you have to have the quality all the way down, and it's still kind of rough. I would not recommend running Fortnite. Fortnite actually runs much better um, if you have an iPad or, or an iPhone, uh, uh, an iOS, that does on this. Um... Yeah, but I was able to export a 4K video. It was a 15-minute long 4K video. And the 15-minute long 4K video, um, it was video from my iPhone. It was a 4K 60 FPS video I took on my iPhone, 15 minutes long. It exported in 35 minutes. And it, it was, it didn't like, I mean, yeah, the fan was running hard, but it can handle 4K exporting. It, it takes a while. It took 35 minutes for 15 minutes of video. Whether or not that's acceptable is, is up to you to decide. If you rarely make videos and they a, a couple of weeks or less than that, then that shouldn't be a problem. Now, if your career depends on you producing several videos per day and time is money, then, well, yeah, that might be a problem. You'll probably have to invest in something a little more powerful. But for most people, for 99% of the tasks you do, this is a great little computer in a, in a, in a beautiful, sleek form factor, thin and light, not as light as... The, the just plain MacBook, but still pretty light. It, it has a nice nice compromise of substantial feeling and being light so that it's comfortable to carry. I really like it. But like I said, in a vacuum, when you compare it to Apple's other laptops, you then realize that pretty much all of their laptops start out at around the same price, give or take $100 or so. So how much sense does it make then? If you really want super portability, wouldn't you just go with a 12-inch MacBook? And if you want something that's still pretty thin and light but more powerful like a good bit more powerful, once you just go with a base model, no touch bar MacBook Pro, being that they all start around the same price, and especially when you option it up like this, with 512 gigs of SSD and 16 gigs of RAM, I mean, we're getting up there in the price category closer to the 13 inch MacBook Pro with touch bar. <laughs> and, that's a, and that's a huge performance increase. So yeah, here's, here's what I came up with. If you're, if you're stuck between the 2018 MacBook Air, the just plain MacBook, 12-inch, and the no-touch bar MacBook Pro, between those three, I would still go with this, the 2018 MacBook Air. The reason being, the 12-inch just plain MacBook only has one port. I mean, technically, one port and one jack. You still get a headphone jack. But it's got that one... That one USB Type C port, it's not even Thunderbolt 3, so it's not super high speed. You can't, uh, you can't run um, any GPU with it. You can't. Well, well, the biggest problem is it's just one port. So if you want to get a, a, an adapter that you know can give you multi ports, you have to get an adapter that has a pass through for USB Type C power, and that's kind of annoying. And then you know the reliability of those isn't always the greatest. You know you can find a bunch of them on Amazon, but they're usually from no name brands, and yeah. It's just so nice to have two ports on this because you can have one plug in to power and one to use with any type of adapter, hub, dongle, whatever, eGPU, whatever. And they are full-fledged Thunderbolt 3, so it can support eGPU and um, a 5K monitor, even if you wanted to do that, or up to two 4K monitors. But yeah, just because it, it just stinks to only have one port. And you get an extra inch of screen size on this one. You get Touch ID on this one. You get the newer generation processor on this one. You get a better keyboard on this one. It's the next generation of butterfly keyboard. And it is also a little bit more powerful than the, the just plain 12-inch MacBook. And it has that 16 gig of RAM option. Now, why not get the 13-inch MacBook Pro no touch bar? Now that one is using last gen processors. Apple didn't update it this year, but it is more powerful. Definitely more powerful. It's a full power processor, um, not just this Y series. Um, but those ones have the older keyboard and those are known for failures. Now we don't know yet that this keyboard, this newest generation of butterfly switch, we don't know that it won't fail, but we know for sure the last generation did fail in some cases. So, I mean, if you're getting any of these computers, you should definitely go with them. Um, Apple Care, definitely make sure you get Apple Care. You're already spending this much money. What's a little bit more? You don't want to be out of luck down the line when your computer breaks and you've got to pay $1,000 to fix the keyboard. But yeah, the no touch bar MacBook Pro, yeah, it's, it's last gen, even though it's a little bit more powerful, but y you get the worst keyboard and you don't get Touch ID. And even if that's not a big deal to you, I don't know. There's something about the 2018 MacBook 
air that seems like a more enjoyable computer. I mean, it's, it's the newest laptop that Apple came out with. It feels newer and fresher than the, the no touch bar MacBook Pro. And, and I don't know, I just really like the nice wedge design. And like I said, I do wish it had a couple more cores or just a full power processor in it, but it does really well with 99% of the tasks that most people are going to do. You know you're not, pe most people know they're not going to be gaming on a Mac. So yeah, it's not going to do that. But yeah, it has no problem. Like I said, exporting 4K video, you might have to wait a while, but it can do it. Um, as far as watching video on YouTube. Okay, this is where it gets interesting. 4K 60 FPS, it tends to have a little bit of a problem with that, at least in Chrome. And I know Chrome isn't exactly known to be very efficient with, um, <laughs> you, you know, the way the way it runs. But 60 FPS 4K uh, would, would stop a, here and there on me. It would like, be like it's buffering, but I know it's not my internet connection. But when I would tone it down to 1440p, um, that seems to be the sweet spot. Being that this screen's resolution is roughly 1440p, it's, I mean, it's not quite 1440p. It's a little bit taller than it is wide, so it's not quite 1440p, but just about. That's that's the resolution you should really run stuff at on here watching video and and it's it's gonna look great and like I said 4K 60 or 4K 30 didn't have a problem but it seemed like uh, in some YouTube videos with 4K 60 that's the only place where I had a problem with uh, the video was stuttering but 4K 30 or 1440p 30 or 60 should be fine and like I said Chrome's not that well optimized anyway uh, I'm not sure how Firefox would do with it Safari is the best optimized browser but safari does not support anything above 1080p on on uh, youtube so if you want 1440p even you got to go with a third-party browser but yeah i don't think many people are gonna have a problem with this i really like this computer like i said i would pick this over the no touch bar macbook pro and i would pick this over the 12 inch macbook now where wouldn't i pick this over the 13 inch macbook pro with touch bar if it's between this and the 13-inch MacBook Pro with touch bar, I would say if you can afford the extra money, go with the 13-inch MacBook Pro with touch bar. It is a good bit more than the MacBook Air, but if you do what I did and you option up the SSD to 512 and you option up the RAM, it's almost the same price as that. So really, you're probably stupid for not getting the 13-inch MacBook Pro with touch bar, being that it is a you know, much more powerful computer overall. I mean, literally at that point, I was only about $102 away from that, maybe 300 but not not a lot. So I don't know. I just, I went with this because I was so curious to see, you know, they finally came out with a MacBook Air, a new MacBook Air. Everyone thought it was dead. I just wanted to get it and see what it was like. And, you know, whether or not it makes a lot of sense to buy it, I don't know. I like it. I'm happy with my decision to buy it. I mean, you just have to, you know, try it for yourself, see if you like it. I feel like most people will really like the new 2018 MacBook Air. Like I said... Honestly, if you're going to be smart about it, between this and, and the MacBook Pro with Touch Bar, that's a that's a quad-core processor. There's even an option for a quad-core i7 in that. I mean, that's a lot better. That's a lot more powerful of a computer. Um, honestly, if you did what I did and up the RAM and up the SSD, at that point, you might as well get that one instead of this. But I don't know. There's something about the new MacBook Air that just seemed really fun and really appealing to me. And honestly, I don't really regret it. I I enjoy using it. It's it's fun to use. It's easy to stash, and and it's just so nice and light. And it's nice not to have a computer that's a dinosaur. And like I said, it uh, between this and the plain MacBook 12 inch, and between this and the no Touch Bar MacBook Pro, I do stand by getting a 2018 MacBook Air. The only one real complaint I have with this computer is the webcam. The webcam is for some reason, it's supposed to be 720p, but it, it looks really bad unless, unless you're in really good lighting conditions. So I don't know what it is. If you're in like in front of a window or in like studio lighting conditions, it looks pretty good. It looks like 720p, you know, not the best, but all right. But it actually looks really bad. Even worse than my 2011 MacBook Pro, or even worse than the old MacBook Airs, in like normal or low light conditions. I don't know why they just put such a bad webcam in it, but that's just one really weird thing that annoys me. But yeah, I know, that might not be a big deal to you. Just keep that in mind if you're going to use this for a lot of video conferencing. I mean, yeah, you can always use an external webcam, but that kind of sucks for something that you spent, you know, you know, $1,200, $1,500, almost $2,000 on, depending on how you configured it. Um... Yeah, so that's just kind of weird, one thing that really annoys me. 
I mean, yeah, I know some people, the first thing they do when they get a computer is put a piece of tape over the webcam, so they don't care about that anyway. But, yeah, that's one annoying thing to keep in mind with this computer. I don't know why it has such a bad webcam in it. But other than that, I really like the 2018 MacBook Air, and I definitely think it's a better computer than the just plain 12-inch MacBook and the no-touch bar MacBook Pro. But if you can do the touch bar MacBook Pro, I would say go with that. Other than that, you're really going to like this computer. At least you should anyway. I do.